All right. Uh, welcome, CMC audience. I'm Molly Jane, CMC's content lead. And today we have with us Jonah from Magic Eden to do a little workshop about Solana NFTs. Jonah, how are you feeling today? Feeling pretty good. Thanks for having me, guys. Yeah, loving the avatar. <laughs> I should have, worn, <laughs> should have worn my hat and then we could have matched. <laughs> yeah, uh, this is my favorite avatar. It's a soul god. Uh, one of um, Solana's premium um, NFT collections. It's scary. I'm not going to lie. It's terrifying. <laughs> <laughs> it's, uh, it's, um, it's actually uh, based on uh, like a Greek artist, um, some illusionist artist. Uh, it's, uh, I'm a big fan. They're a, they're a really good collection. We'll, we'll actually be covering them shortly today. All right. All right. Well, I'll, I'm just going to dive right into it then. Perfect. So, so a little bit about me. Um, uh, my name's Jonah, uh, product lead for Magic Eden, Solana's leading NFT marketplace. Now, in my day to day, I work with our engineering team to build trading tools and products that our customers care about. Unfortunately, that also means like I get to sit in front row seats to really watch emerge this like fantastical, amazing, and like often insanely wild world of Solana NFTs. So what I'll be doing today is um, I'll be your guide on a brief tour of the Solana ecosystem. And then finally, we'll uh, end with a kind of like a live walkthrough of the Magic Eden trading platform. And hopefully by the end of this workshop, you'll have a better lay of the land of Solana NFTs in general, um, the kind of like general meta uh, that that's kind of prevailing right now um, in the Solana ecosystem and just overall trends. And um, we'll also do a quick walkthrough of like how to actually trade NFTs on Magic Eden. So hopefully you'll find this useful. So for those of you who are already into Solana NFTs, I'm sure you're already one of our users. And so it's great to see you again. Um, so yeah, let's dive in. So just a little bit about like the Solana NFT ecosystem in general. Like it's really exploded in the last nine months. So on Magic Eden alone, uh, with us being the leading NFT marketplace, over 1.5 billion uh, US dollars in uh, NFT trading volume has happened since we launched eight months ago. So innovation has continued to grow led by what we call like kind of OG collections, the original collections that launched them um, in Solana summer uh, last year. And uh, also new collections that have built on top of what these OG collections have uh, built a foundation on. And finally, like we're, we're seeing a lot of new categories emerging in Solana. Um, game devs are entering uh, the Solana ecosystem to take advantage of the low transaction speed, um, uh, sorry, the, the low transaction cost and the high transaction speeds. And- We don't want low transaction <laughs> speed. <laughs> no, no, exactly, exactly. Um, and, uh, and yeah, we're seeing a huge influx of talent and capital from Web2 into the Web3 gaming uh, industry. So, the interesting thing to note is that like we actually drove 90 plus percent of gaming volume on Solana uh, ever since we've launched. So a little bit about Magic Eden. Um, we are the homepage for Solana NFTs. We're the fastest growing marketplace on the fastest growing eco-friendly blockchain, Solana. So on any given day, like our market share on Solana fluctuates, um, but you know, uh, we're usually, we usually sit around the 90 to 95% market share mark. And um, in terms of like uh, NFT trading volume, uh, we've done a cumulative of over 12 million soul in secondary volume. Every month we see over 20 million user sessions. And right now we have over 7,000 NFT collections listed. And um, we also have a launch pad, which is where uh, Solana NFT collections come to launch their mints. And we've done over 150 launches so far. So let's take a look at like key market trends. So ever since uh, Solana NFTs really uh, came into being last summer, um, the ecosystem has continued to go from strength to strength. And what we're seeing is um, there's actually quite a few like very recognizable NFT collections now, um, what we call blue chips on Solana. And Solana blue chip NFT prices have actually seen an inversely correlated trend in terms of like um, uh, soul terms, right? To the price of Solana in USD terms, which is really, really interesting to see um, given like, you know, recently the market conditions have really 
um, kind of not been that great. And amidst these like really bearish uh, kind of market conditions, we're actually seeing um, uh, uh, Solana blue chip NFT prices like actually in sole terms go up. So mm-hmm. we'll we'll be covering all of these things on um, you know uh, as we go along. Yeah. So what we're, what we're seeing um, is uh, the Solana NFT ecosystem kicked off in the summer of 2021, and just we really haven't looked back since. So over 50,000 NFTs are minted on average daily, and secondary volumes have hit high highs of as much as 300,000 soul. So at the peak here, like uh, when we hit the 300,000 soul mark, Solana was at around 100 US dollars. So that was around, uh, yeah. So so that's a you know quite a stunning number. Um, for an NFT ecosystem that's not even a year old. So um, the explosion of NFTs have also co- coincided with like just an astronomical like increase in, in wallet usage. So over three and a half million wallets that have interacted with at least one NFT, we've, we've now seen, right? So we've hit the three and a half million dollar, uh, sorry, three and a half million wallet mark, which is like just, you know, mind boggling to me. Um, so I, I actually, I actually got into Solana NFTs, like not more than three months ago. And that number was not even close to the three and a half million mark. So it's just absolutely crazy. Um, so like the, the thing that a lot of people will immediately notice is that, you know, compared to the Ethereum ecosystem, Solana native collections actually have like their own kind of unique culture and community. So like we have these like OG collections, Solana Monkey Business, The Gods. These collections have really built up like a really cult following. And the interesting thing is like these followings are all Solana native. Like they didn't start off in Ethereum NFTs. They actually went straight to Solana. And um, these communities actually are are native homegrown communities. So um, a lot of you guys that are following like NFTs in general will probably know that um, OpenSea actually recently launched um, on Solana as well. Mm-hmm. And the interesting thing is like the OpenSea launch on Solana um, on the 6th of April, right? Actually actually boosted um, the, the, the trading volumes on Magic Eden, interestingly enough. So here you have um, a comparison of like on launch day, uh, what those volumes look like, OpenSea versus Magic Eden. Um, this is like kind of like a not so humble brag, but you know we're we're actually very proud of what, what we've been able to achieve here. So like let's take a quick tour of like some of these blue chip uh, Solana NFT collections. Um, so like the 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 top collections um, are like consistently building, and they're really setting the stage for a wave of collections focused on providing more utility and more fun and more community involvement to holders. So Solana monkey business is probably one of Solana's like first ever true DAOs. And um, what they did in terms of innovation was they launched the validator on Solana. They're one of the first DAOs to actually own and maintain their own validator node. And um, they also launched the first ever staking pool um, on Solana as a DAO, right? So um, the, it's, it's really cool because like, uh, the the validator actually is is a part of the DAO's business. So part of the DAO's treasury income actually comes from validator fees that the the node earns um, by uh, validating Solana transactions. So um, really cool innovation there, and one of like um, my very favorite like collections on Solana. Um, Borioku Dragons is another one. So like you can see um, this this guy right here, mm-hmm. Borioku Dragons again. Um, one of the very, very OG collections um, and uh, with really really, like a a very big cult following. Um, They recently acquired Metaverse Land on Sandbox and Ethereum. So these guys are kind of paving the way for like a cross-chain NFT collection. Um, And so like their holders will all actually get access to their piece of land on Sandbox. And um, yeah, I can't wait to see what they do. Um, Super Shadowy Coder DAO is another, like, one of these OG collections, and um, they actually were one of the first NFT collections on Solana to use a utility token to fundraise capital um, for, uh, for their own, like, actual, like, uh, uh, tech infrastructure. So, uh, again, they brought a lot of innovation to the space, and um, they're continuing to innovate. Uh, here we have another three. 
Um, we have famous Fox Federation. They're very known for like building like really, really robust NFT trading tools. And you, could, you have to actually own a famous Fox um, to actually use their tools. And they're really, really good. I'm actually a holder of a famous Fox myself. And um, I love their trading tools. Um, although, you know, Magic Eden's tools are probably slightly better. <laughs> <laughs> I think you would say that, then, yeah. Yeah, <laughs> yeah kind of have to. <laughs> um, then we have soul gods, right? So my avatar is actually a soul god. And um, they're one of my personal favorites. I really love the art, as creepy as they look. But um, recently, they launched a sister NFT collection called Fracture. And um, you can actually redeem... Uh, uh, like a one of one piece of art uh, using your soul god. Now, finally, we have like Stone Eight Crew, another uh, blue chip collection on Solana. I really wanted to call this one out because um, by staking a Stone Eight Crew NFT, you can actually get utility token Puff, and Puff can actually be used to buy real cannabis in the real world. So, <laughs> that's <great>. um, <laughs> yeah, that's pretty cool. Okay, so finally, like um, this is probably one of Solana's like largest uh, and uh, like kind of most famous and most sought after um, OG collection as D gods. So they also have a utility token um, dust and dust. Uh, I really like the, 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 the name of the token dust. Cause like everyone just says, Oh, I'm just going to collect more dust. And it's just, it's kind of funny, but okay. um, <laughs> yeah. Um, and you can actually use dust for a variety of like uh, applications, including like um, bidding on auctions for blue chip NFTs. Um, so uh, D Gods actually uh, also runs a DAO, and I think the call out there is D Gods is probably the first um, NFT DAO uh, to have actually acquired a real world basketball team. Mm -hmm. And so they recently acquired a big three league basketball team um, for around 625 US, I think. Uh, so that's pretty crazy. Um, and all those funds actually just came from uh, revenue from royalties from uh, NFT trading activity. So I think um, finally the big call out here, right, is OK Bears. I think um, everyone that's, that hasn't been hiding under a rock um, in the NFT scene will have heard of OK Bears. So a lot of people are calling OK Bears launch on Solana. Um, like a watershed moment for the Solana ecosystem um, because it was just one of the craziest launches we've, we've seen um, in a very long time. Uh, so over 500,000 sold traded in the first four days post listing. That's, you know, that just blows every single NFT collection that's so far launched on Solana out of the water. And what we're seeing is OK Bears with like excellent, excellent branding, um, very, very creative marketing has managed to um, actually capture the interest of um, uh, Ethereum NFT collectors. And we're starting to see a lot of Ethereum liquidity actually flow um, into Solana as a result of the OK's Bear, OK Bears launch. So very impressive um, project. We work very closely with the OK Bears team and you know every day they're coming up with something new. So I'm very excited to see what the future holds for OK Bears. Overall, um, I think like uh, we're just seeing very, very strong um, community engagement uh, with some of these top Solana projects. So like in late February, nine of the top, uh, nine of uh, the top 10 NFT collections um, by community strength and social media engagement, right, were actually ETH collections. But fast forward three months to May, uh, like, Solana projects now take like five out of the top 10 spots with OK Bears ranked second behind only Board of Yacht Club. So this is like, this just, again, it's like one of those stats just, just like when I, whenever I look at it, it just kind of blows my mind because um, yeah, it's just, I would never have imagined this like, you know, uh, at the beginning of the year that we would have a Solana project ranked second behind BAYC. Yeah, pretty, pretty crazy. So um, I think the, the final call out there in early May, um, you know, the top five sold projects reached over 1.7 million people and followers on Twitter, which is just like a, almost a 40% increase from the month prior. So if we keep this up, yeah, uh, who knows what we're going to look like by the end of the year. So finally, like, I think um, the call out here, right, is uh, basically 
Solana price is this green line here. So the Solana price of Solana has actually been falling um, ever since like late last year. Right. So, um, you know, the, the, there's been a kind of like a bearish sentiment overall to the crypto market. But um, we see uh, all the, the prices of all other NFT collections actually going up. And there seems to be an inverse correlation um, between uh, the price of Solana and the average price of like some of these blue chip collections um, priced in Seoul, of course. Right. So mm -hmm. it doesn't seem like... Um, the bearish market sentiment has really affected um, the the overall like uh, just kind of bullish um, uh, approach that some NFT investors on Solana have, have taken towards some of these blue chip collections. So um, yeah, so so that was kind of like a, a quick overview of of the market trends. Um, I hope you guys found that useful. Uh, I look at some of these stats, and uh, you know, I, I find them. I find them really, really impressive, and I hope you did too. So uh, I just have a first question from the audience. I'm just going to hit you with um, before we sure. move on, which is, of all the you know blockchains out there, why did Magic Eden choose to build on Solana in the first place? So Solana is just uh, Solana is a very interesting place um, because, uh, and I think we can sum it down to uh, you know two main factors. The first factor is um, our founders were actually, I think, just in the right place at the right time. Um, and, you know, in startup land, uh, that's everything, right? Right timing, right place. Um, and our founders have uh, always been very close to the Solana ecosystem. They've been very on, like, with their ears close to the ground. And uh, back in, when we launched back in August of 2021, the Solana NFT ecosystem was just starting. And um, this was when uh, the Ethereum NFT ecosystem had, had kind of already reached like really, really bullish peaks, right? Really bullish heights. And uh, we, we kind of put two and two together and realized like Solana, because of its um, uh, developer ecosystem uh, and, and the pro main programming language being in Rust, just made us realize that uh, it would probably take a little bit more time for um, developers to actually onboard themselves into Solana and that there would probably be a delayed effect um, for just overall um, like market activity um, on Solana. And so our founders took a bet and uh, essentially said, look, um, we think this is where the next wave of NFT activity is really going to happen. Um, and this is where the next uh, wave, the next bullish, like really exponential wave is really going to take place. Um, they took that bet and it paid off. All right. That definitely answered the question. Someone from the YouTube uh, comments also said, so helpful. Thank you. So, so helpful. And thank you. <laughs> <laughs> thank you. <laughs> Okay. So moving on, do you want to show us a little bit about how to actually use Magic Eden and sure. interact? Sure, sure, sure. Um, so I actually have a slide here about, you know, how to get onto Solana. Um, I'll just go through it quickly because I'm just assuming most of us here um, already kind of are pretty familiar with crypto and, and crypto wallets. But um, essentially to get onto Solana, um, you would have to download a Solana compatible wallet such as Phantom. So um, uh, you can just get it in the Chrome extension, uh, Chrome extension store, or uh, Phantom also has a really uh, user-friendly mobile app. So uh, highly recommended that you get Phantom. Um, very easy to fund your wallet. You can do it through a non-custodial bridge like Wormhole, supports fund transfers from most major L1s. Um, you can also bridge funds uh, through withdrawals um, from most major crypto exchanges. Um, and then finally, you'll have to, of course, buy some Sol. Um, Sol is the native gas token of Solana, and it's used to purchase NFTs on Magic Eden as well. So yeah, definitely going to come in handy. Um, and uh, yeah, so so that was Phantom. That was how to how to actually get funded, um, how to get started on trading NFTs. And um, let's dive right into Magic Eden then. Perfect. Yeah, that was going to be my next question. Yeah. Um, so. By now, you're either intrigued by the <laughs> colorful and often crazy looking frenetic world of Solana NFTs, or if you were like me when I got started, like completely shell-shocked and don't know where to start, right? So 
there are hundreds of thousands of NFTs on the Solana market. So how do you even know where to start? So like, this is where um, I'd like to share with you a couple of things. The first being uh, Magic DAO, right? So Magic Eden actually launched the DAO back in February um, this year. And essentially what you get by joining the DAO is you get access to alpha. And for those of you who are new to NFTs, like alpha is a term we use to describe like information, market intelligence, right? So um, Magic DAO is actually a Discord channel that uh, people holding our magic tickets um, can get access to. And you'll get access to this channel where you can actually just hang out with influencers, hang out with what we call alpha hunters, right? So people in our community that go out and source um, really good market data, market intelligence, and you can learn how to trade NFTs through that. Um, secondly, of course, you can just hang out with people. It's a great place to just, you know, um, chat and, and learn from other people in the community. And finally, we also give out rewards. So one of our main, um, you know, like attractions, right, is uh, we actually are able to source um, NFT whitelists. Uh, and these are just like kind of VIP spots that um, we've specially reserved for Magic DAO members so that they can go to our launch pad and be guaranteed a mint um, on, uh, on uh, any of our launch pad uh, drops, right? So very, very valuable uh, uh, value proposition there. And all you have to do to get in is to buy a Magic ticket available in Magic Eden. You can connect um, yourselves to the Discord channel just by flashing your magic ticket. And yeah, you have access to all these awesome features. So um, that's Magic DAO. Now, what I'd like to do is uh, actually show you what happens on Magic Eden. Yeah, so Yeah, so what I would like to do is, I actually need to, just give me a second, guys. I will have to head over to Magic Eden here. Okay. So this, guys, is Magic Eden. Now, let's take a look at our drop calendar first. That's uh, usually where I would recommend people start. Now, what is our drop calendar? It is actually a place where um, you can see all upcoming NFT collection launches happening across the entire Solana ecosystem. So... Um, Let's see what some of the most popular collections are here. So I just sorted by um, upvotes and we can see that this Suteki Min is highly, highly upvoted. Um, and these are actually all organic votes from um, our users, right? So let's just take a look at uh, what this is. So now this brings us to Launchpad actually. So um, what is Launchpad? So Launchpad is the platform for creators to launch their collections effortlessly. So um, I, this is probably a topic for another talk, but um, minting an NFT is not as easy as I would hoped. Uh, I would have hoped it to be. And so, you know, creators actually need a lot of help um, in launching their collections. So what our Launchpad helps our creators to do is to help them get exposure to um, the Solana ecosystem through our marketing channels. We also have like best in class tech and like uh, launch capabilities. So we have all the tech under the hood. We have all the smart contracts that creators will need to launch their uh, NFT collections. And um, essentially by launching on Magic Eden, uh, they'll be uh, entering into a long-term partnership with us. So Suteki here is uh, actually a pretty hype mint. Um, that's going to be happening, um, I think, uh, sometime in June. So what you see here is uh, a, a page uh, of the collection essentially describing themselves to um, people that might be interested to mint an NFT when it launches. Now, unfortunately, um, right now, we don't have any live mints happening on Magic Eden. So um, I can't really show you uh, what the Launchpad experience really looks like. But you guys should definitely come back when there's a live mint. Um, we can actually take a look at what's coming up next. So we have uh, actually one in three hours. Uh, so come That's back in soon. three hours. Yeah, it's pretty soon. Um, so come back, check it out. And 
Yeah, hope you guys are able to mint something. These mints go pretty fast, so. So we have about okay. four minutes left before this talk ends. Um, you mentioned earlier that one of the problems with minting NFTs is it's not as easy as you'd like it to be. Could you explain mm -hmm. a little bit more about some of the pain points in minting NFTs and how to make it, how Solana makes it easier on Magic Eden? Yeah, so um, first off, like I think uh, if you're actually like quite um, technically savvy uh, with Rust and smart contracts, right? It's it's um it's a, it's pretty easy it, it's pretty easy to 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 actually implement. But if like most creators, um, you guys don't have a developer on your team, uh, these smart contracts uh, can can get um, pretty unwieldy, right? So what we do is um, we actually have a set of um, uh, ready to use contracts that uh, we actually help our con uh, our creators deploy um, very easily. And um, all uh, our creators need to do is um, actually provide us with assets and we'll get everything uploaded to our Weave or IPFS. Um, and um, we'll also get the mint contracts um, deployed. We call them candy machines, right? And we'll get them deployed automatically for, for our creators. So it's really like a, a kind of like a one, uh, it's a one-stop shop. Like, uh, so that's kind of how we solved the problem for creators. Got it. So it's just removing some of the pain points that they might experience right. if they're minting on that's their right. own. All right. So probably time for one more question. Um, okay. Actually, two questions quickly. The first, and you can answer them in whatever order you want. Uh, the first one is, is there a cost to using the Magic Eden Launchpad? And the second one is, how do you value the NFTs on Magic Eden Marketplace? Uh, so yes, there is a cost to using the launchpad. Um, depending on uh, the, the 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 service tier that collections uh, uh, take on with us, it, it ranges from anywhere from eight to ten percent of the total mint cost. So, like if a if a collection's raising a hundred thousand soul, we would take you know eight to ten percent of that. All right, and then how do you value your NFTs on Magic Eden? How do you value? Okay. Mm -hmm. um, let me, <laughs> let me, yeah, let me go really quickly into this. I just kind of sure. want to show it off. So yeah, of course, but, visuals are the best. <laughs> so look, this is a collections page on uh, Magic Eden. This is OK Bears. So one really good way to see if your NFT is overpriced or underpriced is by looking at the rarity um, of uh, your NFT. So here we have a really like kind of a robust uh, stats page, right? We're very proud of this. Um, and what you can do is you can actually scope out um, undervalued NFTs for a certain rarity. So the rarer it is, the more close to the left it's going to be. And um, I essentially look for outliers here, right? So this NFT right here is ranked 11,000, uh, sorry, 1157. And um, it's going for around 188 soul. But something with a similar rarity right up here is going for almost 250. So this guy looks like a pretty good deal. So um, we have really, really good tools here on Magic Eden. Um, yeah, definitely come and check it out. All right, thank you so much for joining us today. Um, I hope to see you around in our virtual moon-based metaverse after this. And if not, just you know, maybe somewhere on Magic Eden someday. Okay, all right, thanks for having me guys. Thank you so much.